why are arthropods considered the most biologically successful phylum of animals? Members of the phylum Arthropoda are characterized by jointed appendages and an exoskeleton of chitin. There are more than one million species of arthropods currently known to science. And many biologists believe there are millions more to be identified. Arthropods are the most biologically successful group of animals because they are the most diverse and live in a greater range of habitats than do the members of any other phylum of animals. In what year was the European starling, Sternus vulgans wingspan, imported into the United States? Eugene Schieffelin, 1826-1906, imported the European starling into the United States in 1890. Schieffelin wanted to establish in the United States every bird found in Shakespeare's works. He also imported English sparrows to New York City in 1860. What is the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Reptiles are clad in scales, shields, or plates, and their toes have claws. Amphibians have moist, glandular skins, and their toes lack claws. Reptile eggs have a thick, hard, or parchment-like shell that protects the developing embryo from moisture loss, even on dry land. The eggs of amphibians lack this protective outer covering and are always laid in water or in damp places. Young reptiles are miniature replicas of their parents in general appearance if not always in coloration and pattern. Juvenile amphibians pass through a larval, usually aquatic, stage before they metamorphose, change in form and structure, into the adult form. Reptiles include alligators, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes. Amphibians include salamanders, toads, and frogs. When was the term dinosaur first used? The term dinosaur was first used by Richard Owen. 1804 to 1892, in 1841 in his report on British fossil reptiles. The term, meaning fearful lizard, was used to describe the group of large, extinct reptiles whose fossil remains had been found by many collectors. What is the difference between porpoises and dolphins? Marine dolphins, family Delphinidae, and porpoises, family Phocinidae, together comprise about 40 species. The chief differences between dolphins and porpoises occur in the snout and teeth. True dolphins have a beak-like snout and cone-shaped teeth. True porpoises have a rounded snout and flat or spade-shaped teeth.
How far from shore do shark attacks occur? In a study of 570 shark attacks, it was found that most shark attacks occur near shore. These data are not surprising since most people who enter the water stay close to the shore. What is the largest invertebrate? The largest invertebrate is the giant squid, Archituthis ducks, which averages 30 to 53 feet, 9 to 16 m, in length including its tentacles. It may reach a length of 69 feet 21 meters. These animals have the largest eyes, up to 10 in, 25 centimeters, in diameter, in the animal kingdom. It is believed that they generally live on or near the ocean bottom at a depth of 3,281 feet. 1,000 m, or slightly more than a half mile below the surface of the sea. Is there a cat that lives in the desert? The sand cat, Felis margarita, is the only member of the cat family tied directly to desert regions. Found in the deserts of North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and western Pakistan, the sand cat has adapted to extremely arid desert areas. The padding on the solace of its feet is well suited to the loose sandy soil. And it can live without drinking freestanding water. Having sandy or grayish ochre dense fur, its body length is 17.5 to 22 in, 45 to 57 centimeters. Mainly nocturnal, active at night. The cat feeds on rodents, hares, birds, and reptiles. The Chinese desert cat, Felis biotti, does not live in the desert as its name implies. But inhabits the steppe country and mountains. Likewise, the Asiatic desert cat, Felis sylvestris or nata. Inhabits the open plains of India, Pakistan, Iran, and Asiatic Russia. What is unusual about the teeth of sharks? Sharks were among the first vertebrates to develop teeth. The teeth are not set into the jaw but rather sit atop it. They are not firmly anchored and are easily lost. The teeth are arranged in 6 to 20 rows. With the ones in front doing the biting and cutting. Behind these teeth. Others grow. When a tooth breaks or is worn down. A replacement moves forward. One shark may eventually develop and use more than 20,000 teeth in a lifetime. What features of reptiles enabled them to become true land vertebrates? Legs were arranged to support the body's weight more effectively than in amphibians. Allowing reptile bodies to be larger and to run. 
reptilian lungs were more developed with a greatly increased surface area for gas exchange than the sac-like lungs of amphibians. The three-chambered heart of reptiles was more efficient than the amphibian heart. In addition, the skin was covered with hard, dry scales to minimize water loss. However, the most important evolutionary adaptation was the amniotic egg. In which an embryo could survive and develop on land. The eggs were surrounded by a protective shell that prevented the developing embryo from drying out. What is the name of the seal-like animal in Florida? The West Indian manatee, Trechus manatus, in the winter. Moves to more temperate parts of Florida, such as the warm headwaters of the Crystal and Homosassa. 271 rivers in central Florida or the tropical waters of southern Florida. When the air temperature rises to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius. It will wander back along the Gulf Coast and up the Atlantic Coast as far as Virginia. Long-range offshore migrations to the coast of Guiana and South America have been documented. In 1983, when the population of manatees in Florida was reduced to several thousand, the state gave it legal protection from being hunted or commercially exploited. However, many animals continue to be killed or injured by the encroachment of humans. Entrapment in locks and dams, collisions with barges and power boat propellers and so on cause at least 30% of manatee deaths, which total 125 to 130 annually. What freshwater mammal is venomous? The male duck-billed platypus, Ornithorhynchus anatinus, has venomous spurs located on its hind legs. When threatened, the animal will drive the spurs into the skin of a potential enemy, inflicting a painful sting. The venom this action releases is relatively mild and generally not harmful to humans. What is the only American canine that can climb trees? The gray fox, Eurocean scenario Argentus, is the only American canine that can climb trees. What is the largest group of mollusks? The gastropods, class Gastropoda, which includes snails, slugs, and their relatives, is the largest and most diverse group of mollusks. It includes more than 40,000 different species and comprises the second largest group of related animals. Only the insects comprise a larger group. Most gastropods are marine animals, but there are many freshwater species. Garden snails and slugs have adapted to land.
Do camels store water in their humps? The hump or humps do not store water, since they are fat reservoirs. The ability to go long periods without drinking water, up to 10 months if there is plenty. Of green vegetation and due to feed on, results from a number of physiological adaptations. One major factor is that camels can lose up to 40% of their body weight with no ill effects. A camel can also withstand a variation of its body temperature by as much as 14 degrees Fahrenheit 8 degrees Celsius. A camel can drink 30 gallons, 113.5 liters of water in 10 minutes and up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, over several hours. A one-humped camel is called a dromedary or Arabian camel. A Bactrian camel has two humps and lives in the wild on the Goba Desert. Today, the Bactrian is confined to Asia, while most of the Arabian camels are on African soil. Which bear lives in a tropical rainforest? The Malayan sun bear, Ursus malayanus, is one of the rarest animals in the tropical forests of Sumatra. The Malay Peninsula, Borneo, Burma, Thailand, and southern China. The smallest bear species, with a length of 3.3 to 4.6 feet, 1 to 1.4 m. And weighing 60 to 143 pounds, 27 to 65 kilograms, it has a strong, stocky body. Against its black, short fur it has a characteristic orange-yellow colored crescent across its chest which according to legend represents the rising sun. With powerful paws having long, curved claws to help it climb trees in the dense forests, it is an expert tree climber. The sun bear tears at tree bark to expose insects, larvae, and the nests of bees and termites. Fruit, coconut palms, and small rodents are also part of its diet. Sleeping and sunbathing during the day, it is active at night. Unusually shy and retiring, cautious, and intelligent. The sun bear is declining in population as its native forests are being destroyed. Will wild birds reject baby birds that have been touched by humans? No. Contrary to popular belief, birds generally will not reject hatchlings touched by human hands. The best thing to do for newborn birds that have fallen or have been pushed out of the nest is to locate the nest as quickly as possible and gently put them back. How are pearls created? Pearls are formed in saltwater oysters and freshwater clams. There is a curtain-like tissue called the mantle within the body of these mollusks. Certain cells on the side of the mantle toward the shell secrete nacre. Also known as mother of pearl, 
during a specific stage of the shell building process. A pearl is the result of an oyster's reaction to a foreign body. Such as a piece of sand or a parasite, within the oyster's shell. The oyster neutralizes the invader by secreting thin layers of nacre around the foreign body. Eventually building it into a pearl. The thin layers are alternately composed of calcium carbonate, argonite, and conchylin. Irritants intentionally placed within an oyster result in the production of what is called cultured pearls. What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes, and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators. What are chondrichthyes? Chondrichthyes are fishes that have a cartilaginous skeleton rather than a bony skeleton. They include such organisms as sharks, skates, and rays. What does the word amphibian mean? The word amphibian, from the Greek term amphibia, means both lives and refers to the animal's double life on land and in water. The usual life cycle of amphibians begins with eggs laid in water which develop into aquatic larvae with external gills, in a development that recapitulates its evolution. The fish-like larva develops lungs and limbs and becomes an adult. How many quills does a porcupine have? For its defensive weapon, the average North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills or specialized hairs. Comparable in hardness and flexibility to slivers of celluloid and so sharply pointed they can penetrate any hide. The quills that do the most damage are the short ones that stud the porcupine's muscular tail. With a few lashes, the porcupine can send a rain of quills that have tiny scale-like barbs into the skin of its adversary. The quills work their way inward because of their barbs and the involuntary muscular action of the victim. Sometimes the quills can work themselves out. But other times the quills pierce vital organs, and the victim dies. Slow-footed and stocky, porcupines spend much of their time in the trees. Using their formidable incisors to strip off bark and foliage for their food, and supplement their diets with fruits and grasses. Porcupines have a ravenous appetite for salt, as herbivores. Plant-eating animals, their diets have insufficient salt. So natural salt licks, animal bones left by carnivores, meat-eating animals. Yellow pond lilies, 
and other items having a high salt content, including paints, plywood adhesives, and human clothing that bears traces of sweat, have a strong appeal to porcupines. How many quills does a porcupine have? For its defensive weapon, the average North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills or specialized hairs. Comparable in hardness and flexibility to Slivers of celluloid and so sharply pointed they can penetrate any hide. The quills that do the most damage are the short ones that stud the porcupine's muscular tail. With a few lashes, the porcupine can send a rain of quills. That have tiny scale-like barbs into the skin of its adversary. The quills work their way inward because of their barbs and the involuntary muscular action of the victim. Sometimes the quills can work themselves out. But other times the quills pierce vital organs, and the victim dies. Slow-footed and stocky, porcupines spend much of their time in the trees. Using their formidable incisors to strip off bark and foliage for their food, and supplement their diets with fruits and grasses. Porcupines have a ravenous appetite for salt, as herbivores. Plant-eating animals, their diets have insufficient salt. So natural salt licks, animal bones left by carnivores, meat-eating animals. Yellow pond lilies, and other items having a high salt content, including paints, plywood adhesives, and human clothing that bears traces of sweat, have a strong appeal to porcupines. What is the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? The African elephant, Loxodonta africana, is the largest living land animal. Weighing up to 8.25 tons, 7,500 kilograms, and standing 10 to 13 feet, 3 to 4 m, at the shoulder. The Indian elephant, Elephas maximus, weighs about 6 tons, 5,500 kilograms, with a shoulder height of 10 feet 3 meters. What is the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? The African elephant, Loxodonta africana, is the largest living land animal. Weighing up to 8.25 tons, 7,500 kilograms, and standing 10 to 13 feet, 3 to 4 m, at the shoulder. The Indian elephant, Elephas maximus, weighs about 6 tons, 5,500 kilograms, with a shoulder height of 10 feet 3 meters. Other differences are, how does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different species. The mastodon seems to have appeared first, and a side branch may have led to the mammoth. 
the mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appears in the Oligocene era, 25 to 38 million years ago. And survived until less than 1 million years ago. It stood a maximum of 10 feet 3 meters tall and was covered with dense, woolly hair. Its tusks were straightforward and nearly parallel to each other. The mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 m. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of the Earth's climate and the change in environment were probably primary factors in the mammoth's extinction. But early man killed many 274 mammoths as well perhaps hastening the process. Other differences are how does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different species. The mastodon seems to have appeared first, and a side branch may have led to the mammoth. The mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appears in the Oligocene era, 25 to 38 million years ago. And survived until less than 1 million years ago. It stood a maximum of 10 feet 3 meters tall and was covered with dense, woolly hair. Its tusks were straightforward and nearly parallel to each other. The mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 m. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of the Earth's climate and the change in Environment were probably primary factors in the mammoth's extinction. But early man killed many 274 mammoths as well perhaps hastening the process. What is the name of the early Jurassic mammal that is now extinct? The fossil site of the mammal Hadracodium wuyi was in Yunnan province, China. This newly described mammal is at least 195 million years old. The estimated weight of the whole mammal is about 0 0.07 os. 2g. Its tiny skull was smaller than a human thumbnail. What is the name of the early Jurassic mammal that is now extinct?
The fossil site of the mammal Hadracodium wuyi was in Yunnan province, China. This newly described mammal is at least 195 million years old. The estimated weight of the whole mammal is about 0.07 os. 2g. Its tiny skull was smaller than a human thumbnail. When was the term physiology first used? The term physiology was first used by the Greeks as early as 600 B. CE to describe a philosophical inquiry into the nature of things. It was not until the 16th century that the term was used in reference to vital activities of healthy humans. During the 19th century its usage was expanded to include the study of all living organisms using chemical, physical, and anatomical experimental methods. When was the term physiology first used? The term physiology was first used by the Greeks as early as 600 B. CE to describe a philosophical inquiry into the nature of things. It was not until the 16th century that the term was used in reference to vital activities of healthy humans. During the 19th century its usage was expanded to include the study of all living organisms using chemical, physical, and anatomical experimental methods. Who is considered the founder of physiology? As an experimenter, Claude Bernard, 1813-1878 Enriched physiology by introducing numerous new concepts into the field. The most famous of these concepts is that of the French milieu interior or internal environment. The complex functions of the various organs are closely interrelated and are all directed to maintaining the constancy of internal conditions despite external changes. All cells exist in this aqueous, blood and lymph, internal environment which bathes the cells and provides a medium for the simple exchange of nutrients and waste material. Who is considered the founder of physiology? As an experimenter, Claude Bernard, 1813 to 1878 enriched physiology by introducing numerous new concepts into the field the most famous of these concepts is that of the French milieu interior or internal environment the complex functions of the various organs are closely interrelated and are all directed to maintaining the constancy of internal conditions despite external changes. All cells exist in this aqueous, blood and lymph, internal environment, which bathes the cells and provides a medium for the simple exchange of nutrients and waste material.
When was the term homeostasis first used? Walter Bradford Cannon, 1871 to 1945, who elaborated on Claude Bernard's concept of the milieu interior. Used the term homeostasis to describe the body's ability to maintain a relative constancy in its internal environment. When was the term homeostasis first used? Walter Bradford Cannon, 1871-1945, who elaborated on Claude Bernard's concept of the milieu interior. Used the term homeostasis to describe the body's ability to maintain a relative constancy in its internal environment. What was the first professional organization of physiologists? The first organization of physiologists was the Physiological Society, founded in 1876 in England. In 1878 the Journal of Physiology began publication as the first journal dedicated to reporting results of research in physiology. The American counterpart, the American Physiological Society, was founded in 1887. The American Physiological Society's sponsored publication, the American Journal of Physiology, began in 1898. What was the first professional organization of physiologists? The first organization of physiologists was the Physiological Society, founded in 1876 in England. In 1878 the Journal of Physiology began publication as the first journal dedicated to reporting results of research in physiology. The American counterpart, the American Physiological Society, was founded in 1887. The American Physiological Society's sponsored publication, the American Journal of Physiology, began in 1898. What are the four levels of structural organization in animals? Every animal has four levels of hierarchical organization, cell, tissue, organ, and organ system. Each level in the hierarchy is of increasing complexity and all organ systems work together to form an organism. What are the four levels of structural organization in animals? Every animal has four levels of hierarchical organization, cell, tissue, organ, and organ system. Each level in the hierarchy is of increasing complexity. And all organ systems work together to form an organism.
What are the four major types of tissue? A tissue, from the Latin texera, meaning to weave, is a group of similar cells that perform a specific function. The four major types of tissue are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerve. What are the four major types of tissue? A tissue, from the Latin texera, meaning to weave, is a group of similar cells that perform a specific function. The four major types of tissue are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerve. Where is epithelial tissue found? Epithelial tissue, also called epithelium, from the Greek ap, meaning on, and the li, meaning nipple, covers every surface, both external and internal, of the body. The outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, is one example of epithelial tissue. Other examples of epithelial tissue are the lining of the lungs, kidney tubules, and the inner surfaces of the digestive system, including the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. Epithelial tissue also includes the lining of parts of the respiratory system. Where is epithelial tissue found? Epithelial tissue, also called epithelium, from the Greek ap, meaning on, and the li, meaning nipple, covers every surface, both external and internal, of the body. The outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, is one example of epithelial tissue. Other examples of epithelial tissue are the lining of the lungs, kidney tubules, and the inner surfaces of the digestive system, including the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. Epithelial tissue also includes the lining of parts of the respiratory system. What are the different shapes and functions of the epithelium? Epithelial tissue consists of densely packed cells. Epithelial tissues are either simple or stratified based on the number of cell layers. Simple epithelium has one layer of cells, while stratified epithelium has multiple layers. Epithelial tissue may have squamous dash, cuboidal dash, or columnar shaped cells. Squamous cells are flat, square cells. Cuboidal cells form a tube. Columnar cells are stacked. Forming a column taller than they are wide. There are two surfaces to epithelial tissue. One side is firmly attached to the underlying structure, while the other forms the lining. The epithelium forms a barrier, allowing the passage of certain substances while impeding the passage of other substances.
What are the different shapes and functions of the epithelium? Epithelial tissue consists of densely packed cells. Epithelial tissues are either simple or stratified based on the number of cell layers. Simple epithelium has one layer of cells, while stratified epithelium has multiple layers. Epithelial tissue may have squamous dash, cuboidal dash, or columnar shaped cells. Squamous cells are flat, square cells. Cuboidal cells form a tube. Columnar cells are stacked. Forming a column taller than they are wide. There are two surfaces to epithelial tissue. One side is firmly attached to the underlying structure, while the other forms the lining. The epithelium forms a barrier. Allowing the passage of certain substances while impeding the passage of other substances. What is the largest group of insects that have been identified and classified? The largest group of insects that has been identified and classified is the order Coleoptera. Beetles, weevils, and fireflies, with some 350,000 to 400,000 species. Beetles are the dominant form of life on Earth, as one of every five living species is a beetle. Which first aid measures can be used for a bite by a black widow spider? The black widow spider, Latrodectus mactans, is common throughout the United States. Its bite is severely poisonous, but no first aid measures are of value. Age, body size, and degree of sensitivity determine the severity of symptoms. Which include an initial pinprick with a dull numbing pain, followed by swelling. An ice cube may be placed 252 over the bite to relieve pain. Between 10 and 40 minutes after the bite. Severe abdominal pain and rigidity of stomach muscles develop. Muscle spasms in the extremities, ascending paralysis. And difficulty in swallowing and breathing may follow. The mortality rate is less than 1%, but anyone who has been bitten should see a doctor. The elderly, infants, and those with allergies are most at risk and may require hospitalization. What are the only sessile crustaceans? Barnacles are the only sessile permanently attached to one location, crustaceans. They were described by the 19th century naturalist Louis Agassiz, 1807-1873. As nothing more than a little shrimp-like animal standing on its head in a limestone house and licking food into its mouth. Accumulations of barnacles may become so great that the speed of a ship may be reduced by 30% to 40%. Necessitating dry docking the ship to remove the barnacles.
What are the four major types of tissue? A tissue, from the Latin texera, meaning to weave, is a group of similar cells that perform a specific function. The four major types of tissue are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nerve. Fish and Wildlife Service What is the most successful and diverse group of terrestrial vertebrates? Birds, members of the class Aves, are the most successful of all terrestrial vertebrates. There are 28 orders of living birds with almost 10. 000 species distributed over almost the entire earth. The success of birds is basically due to the development of the feather. How long does it take the average spider to weave a complete web? The average orb weaver spider takes 30 to 60 minutes to completely spin its web. These species of spiders, order Araneae, use silk to capture their food in a variety of ways. Ranging from the simple trip wires used by large bird eating spiders to the complicated and beautiful webs spun by orb spiders. Some species produce funnel-shaped webs, and other communities of spiders build communal webs. A completed web features several spokes leading from the initial structure. The number and nature of the spokes depend on the species. The spider replaces any damaged threads by gathering up the thread in front of it and producing a new one behind it. The orb web must be replaced every few days because it loses its stickiness and its ability to entrap food. What are the four levels of structural organization in animals? Every animal has four levels of hierarchical organization, cell, tissue, organ, and organ system. Each level in the hierarchy is of increasing complexity. And all organ systems work together to form an organism. What is the name of the early Jurassic mammal that is now extinct? The fossil site of the mammal Hadracodium wuyi was in Yunnan province, China. This newly described mammal is at least 195 million years old. The estimated weight of the whole mammal is about 0 0.07 Oz. 2G. Its tiny skull was smaller than a human thumbnail. Other differences are, how does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different species. 
the mastodon seems to have appeared first, and a side branch may have led to the mammoth. The mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appears in the Oligocene era, 25 to 38 million years ago. And survived until less than 1 million years ago. It stood a maximum of 10 feet 3 meters tall and was covered with dense, woolly hair. Its tusks were straightforward and nearly parallel to each other. The mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 m. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of the Earth's climate and the change in environment were probably primary factors in the mammoth's extinction. But early man killed many 274 mammoths as well perhaps hastening the process. Why do some biologists consider the insects the most successful group of animals? With more than one million described species, and perhaps millions more not yet identified. Class Insecta is the most successful group of animals on Earth in terms of diversity. Geographic distribution, number of species, and number of individuals. More species of insects have been identified than of all other groups of animals combined. What insects lack in size, they make up for in sheer numbers. If we could weigh all the insects in the world, their weight would exceed that of all the remaining terrestrial animals. About 200 million insects are alive at any one time for each human. Do centipedes actually have 100 legs and millipedes have more than 1,000 legs? Centipedes, class Chylopoda, always have an uneven number of pairs of walking legs. Varying from 15 to more than 171. The true centipedes, order Scolopendromorpha, have 21 or 23 pairs of legs. Common house centipedes, Scutigera coleoptrato, have 15 pairs of legs. Centipedes are all carnivorous and feed mainly on insects. Millipedes, class Diplopoda, have 30 or more pairs of legs. They are herbivores, feeding mainly on decaying vegetation. Did dinosaurs and humans ever coexist? No. Dinosaurs first appeared in the Triassic period, about 220 million years ago. And disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. 
modern humans, Homo sapiens, appeared only about 25,000 years ago. Movies that show humans and dinosaurs existing together are only Hollywood fantasies. When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic 268 artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902 the bird portrayed on the seal of the United States of America had assumed its proper white plumage on head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous, Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward who readily flees from the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird. What is a bug, biologically speaking? The biological meaning of the word bug is significantly more restrictive than in common usage. People often refer to all insects as bugs, even using the word to include such organisms as bacteria and viruses as well as glitches in computer programs. In the strictest biological sense, a bug is a member of the order Hemiptera also called true bugs. Members of Hemiptera include bed bugs, squash bugs, clinch bugs, stink bugs, and water striders. How has flight contributed to the success of insects? Flight is one key to the great success of insects. An animal that can fly can escape many predators, find food, and mates. And disperse to new habitats much faster than an animal that must crawl about on the ground. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928. Did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source.
When was the term physiology first used? The term physiology was first used by the Greeks as early as 600 B. CE to describe a philosophical inquiry into the nature of things. It was not until the 16th century that the term was used in reference to vital activities of healthy humans. During the 19th century its usage was expanded to include the study of all living organisms using chemical, physical, and anatomical experimental methods. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of the Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaurs' extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued, as has the theory that mammals ate so. Many dinosaur eggs that dinosaur reproduction was irrevocably harmed. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped the dinosaurs out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980 the American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990 tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110 miles 177 kilometers wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles 9.3 kilometers wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, 
including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the coup de grace. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. What are the different shapes and functions of the epithelium? Epithelial tissue consists of densely packed cells. Epithelial tissues are either simple or stratified based on the number of cell layers. Simple epithelium has one layer of cells, while stratified epithelium has multiple layers. Epithelial tissue may have squamous dash, cuboidal dash, or columnar shaped cells. Squamous cells are flat, square cells. Cuboidal cells form a tube. Columnar cells are stacked. Forming a column taller than they are wide. There are two surfaces to epithelial tissue. One side is firmly attached to the underlying structure, while the other forms the lining. The epithelium forms a barrier, allowing the passage of certain substances while impeding the passage of other substances. What is the name of the bird that perches on the black rhinoceros's back? The bird, a relative of the starling, is called an oxpecker, a member of the Sternidae family. Found only in Africa, the yellow-billed oxpecker, Bufagus africanus wingspan, is widespread over much of western and central Africa, while the red-billed oxpecker, Bufagus erythroinkus wingspan, lives in eastern Africa from the Red Sea to Natal. 7 to 8 in, 17 to 20 centimeters, long with a coffee brown body. The oxpecker feeds on more than 20 species of ticks that live in the height of the black rhinoceros. Dicerus bicornis, also called the hook-lipped rhino. The bird spends most of its time on the rhinoceros or on other animals. Such as the antelope, zebra, giraffe, or buffalo. The bird has even been known to roost on the body of its host. The relationship between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros is called mutualism. The bird feeds on the rhinoceros's ticks benefiting both the bird and the rhinoceros. In addition, the oxpecker, having much better eyesight than the nearsighted rhinoceros, alerts its host with its shrill cries and flight when danger approaches. What bird has the biggest wingspan? Three members of the albatross family, the wandering albatross, 
Diomede Exculens, the Royal Albatross. Diomede Epomophora, and the Amsterdam Island Albatross, Diomeda Amsterdiamensis. Have the greatest wingspan of any bird species with a spread of 8 to 11 feet, 2.5 to 3.3 m. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs? The lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that dinosaurs matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans. Are spiders really dangerous? Most spiders are harmless organisms that, rather than being dangerous to humans, are actually allies in the continuing battle to control insects. Most venom produced by spiders to kill prey is usually harmless to humans. However, there are two spiders in the United States that can produce severe or even fatal bites. They are the black widow spider, Latrodectus mactans, and the brown recluse spider, Loxocells reclusa. Black widows are shiny black, with a bright red hourglass on the underside of the abdomen. The venom of the black widow is neurotoxic and affects the nervous system. About four or five of each 1,000 black widow bites have been reported as fatal. Brown recluse spiders have a violin-shaped strip on their back. The venom of the brown recluse is hemolytic and causes the death of tissues and skin surrounding the bite. Their bite can be mild to serious and sometimes fatal. What are the largest and smallest aerial spider webs? The largest aerial webs are spun by the tropical orb weavers of the genus Nephila, which produce webs that measure up to 18.9 feet 6 meters in circumference. The smallest webs are produced by the species Glyphosis cottony. Their webs cover an area of about 0.75 sq in, 4.84 sq cm. How large is the arthropod population? Zoologists estimate that the arthropod population of the world, including crustaceans, spiders, and insects, numbers about a billion million, 1,018, individuals. More than one million arthropod species have been described. With insects making up the vast majority of them. In fact, two out of every three organisms known on Earth are arthropods. And the phylum is represented in nearly all habitats of the biosphere. About 90% of all arthropods are insects, and about half of the named species of insects are beetles.
What accounts for the different colors of bird feathers? The vivid color of feathers is of two kinds, one, pigmentary, and two, structural. Red, orange and yellow feathers are colored by pigments called lipochromes deposited in the feather barbules as they are formed. Black, brown, and gray colors are from another pigment, melanin. Blue feathers depend not on pigment but on scattering of shorter wavelengths of light by particles within the feather. These are structural feathers. Green colors are almost always a combination of yellow pigment and blue feather structure. Another kind of structural color is the beautiful iridescent color of many birds which ranges from red, orange, copper, and gold to green, blue, and violet. Iridescent color is based on interference that causes light waves to reinforce, weaken, or eliminate each other. Iridescent colors may change with the angle of view. What was the first professional organization of physiologists? The first organization of physiologists was the Physiological Society, founded in 1876 in England. In 1878 the Journal of Physiology began publication as the first. Journal dedicated to reporting results of research in physiology. The American counterpart, the American Physiological Society, was founded in 1887. The American Physiological Society's sponsored publication, the American Journal of Physiology, began in 1898. When was the term homeostasis first used? Walter Bradford Cannon, 1871-1945, who elaborated on Claude Bernard's concept of the milieu interior, used the term homeostasis to describe the body's ability to maintain a relative constancy in its internal environment. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. What is the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? The African elephant, Loxodonta africana, is the largest living land animal. Weighing up to 8.25 tons, 7,500 kilograms, and standing 10 to 13 feet, 3 to 4 m, at the shoulder. The Indian elephant, Elephas maximus, weighs about 6 tons, 5,500 kilograms, with a shoulder height of 10 feet 3 meters.
How many quills does a porcupine have? For its defensive weapon, the average North American porcupine has about 30,000 quills or specialized hairs. Comparable in hardness and flexibility to Slivers of celluloid and so sharply pointed they can penetrate any hide. The quills that do the most damage are the short ones that stud the porcupine's muscular tail. With a few lashes, the porcupine can send a rain of quills that have tiny scale-like barbs into the skin of its adversary. The quills work their way inward because of their barbs and the involuntary muscular action of the victim. Sometimes the quills can work themselves out. But other times the quills pierce vital organs, and the victim dies. Slow-footed and stocky, porcupines spend much of their time in the trees. Using their formidable incisors to strip off bark and foliage for their food, and supplement their diets with fruits and grasses. Porcupines have a ravenous appetite for salt, as herbivores. Plant-eating animals, their diets have insufficient salt. So natural salt licks, animal bones left by carnivores, meat-eating animals. Yellow pond lilies, and other items having a high salt content, including paints, plywood adhesives, and human clothing that bears traces of sweat, have a strong appeal to porcupines. Who is considered the founder of physiology? As an experimenter, Claude Bernard, 1813-1878 Enriched physiology by introducing numerous new concepts into the field. The most famous of these concepts is that of the French milieu interior or internal environment. The complex functions of the various organs are closely interrelated and are all directed to maintaining the constancy of internal conditions despite external changes. All cells exist in this aqueous, blood and lymph, internal environment which bathes the cells and provides a medium for the simple exchange of nutrients and waste material. Where is epithelial tissue found? Epithelial tissue also called epithelium, from the Greek ap, meaning on, and the li, meaning nipple, covers every surface, both external and internal, of the body. The outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, is one example of epithelial tissue. Other examples of epithelial tissue are the lining of the lungs, kidney tubules and the inner surfaces of the digestive system, including the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. Epithelial tissue also includes the lining of parts of the respiratory system. <laughs>